Cards by Kate Fletcher. Today I'm going to be making a pop-up book fold card. I made one recently and showed it in a project share Sunday and a lot of you really liked it so I thought I would make one. Seems like forever since I last made a card on this channel so I'm really excited to be back and showing you how I'm making something. Now I'm going to start with a little disclaimer. This is not my idea at all. Um, there are a lot of different ideas on how to do these out there on YouTube and Instagram and you know wherever you look really. Um, for this one I have used two different tutorials I guess you could say. Uh, one was from Becky's place and the other was from Mixed Up Craft and then I've kind of combined the two and added my own little thing to it. So I'm going to show you what I do. Um, I am going to be using today tonic cardstock for my base and mechanism. So I'm using spearmint green and I'm using cherry red. Now these are only 216 GSM but once you add your mats and layers to them that really isn't going to be an issue. So I am going to be having the spearmint green as my mechanism. So I'm putting that to one side and this is the um, cherry red. So uh, if you follow the channel you'll know I make a lot of 6x6 six six cards uh, because I just think that's a really good size especially if you're going to post them. So this will be 6x6. Six six. So all I've done is cut down a piece of 12x12 12 12, and I'm literally just going to score at the 6 inch mark. And then that'll be my card base done, really. I'll just scroll down there. And I'm going to put that to one side. Now, the um, spearmint green is going to be my mechanism. Um, I'm going to put all of the measurements for this card on my blog. And then I'll link it in the description box so that you can just really easily click on the link and it will take you straight to the right page on my um, blog. I will tell you the sizes that go along but just so you don't have to sit there with like with a pen and paper I'll link it all on the blog and then it's nice and simple. So this is going to be for the mechanism and this measures 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters. Now that's only a quarter of an inch smaller than the card base so that's quite easy to remember. Uh, I'm just going to flip it because I want, I don't know if you have the tonic cardstock but one side's kind of smoother than the other and I really like the texture of the like the linen or whatever you call it so I want that, um, I want that to be shown if possible so actually I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to do some scoring first of all. So on the long side, I am going to be scoring at three inches. And I always go for my score lines a few times just to make sure. Then I'm going to score at five and seven eighths. And then I am going to score at eight and three quarters. Okay, so now we have four different sections. So now I'm going to rotate it round so that it's on the short side and hope that I can keep this in shot. And I am going to be scoring at one and a quarter. And four and a half. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to flip it back onto the long side again. And this time I am going to be scoring at one and a half. But I want to miss out 
the first piece so I want to miss out to this line and also this line so I just want to score in the middle of these two lines so I'm going to find one and a half and score and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same again make sure I don't come off the track So can you see, I've literally, I've missed the top bit of the card and I've scored from this line down to this line and then missed that part out. Right, okie dokie. So that's all the scoring done. So I can get rid of this and I'm going to bring in my trimmer because now I need to do some cutting and make sure this is all in shot it's really really simple where to cut we're literally going to cut this line here but you're not going to cut all of it you're going to start remember this line here that we did in the middle we're going to start there on the end of that line and we're going to go all the way down and we're going to stop at the other um, half line if that makes sense I hope that makes sense so I'm just going to make sure this is all nice and straight in my trimmer first of all So that's the first cut line, as you can see. So I'm now going to flip it around and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. I'm going to cut the first line, but I'm going to start at the half line and go down to the other half line. So I hope this is kind of making sense it is really easy to do it's made even easier now i actually have a trimmer and i'm not trying to use a craft knife and a ruler which is what i did with my first one and typically it slipped and it went a little bit wrong but there's no mistakes in crafting and i was actually able to salvage it so it wasn't the end of the world Right, okay, so we're nearly there now. Let's get rid of the trimmer because we don't need that for a little while. So now we have to make the mechanism. And to do this, we do it in stages. So hold the cardstock so that the middle is lifted. And then starting at the far left side, we're going to make valley and mountain folds. So this first one is going to be a valley. Then we do mountain. The middle of our book is going to be a valley to mountain to valley. Okay, so that's what you should have for now then on the top line you're going to do the same again on the score lines that are left but you're going to do the opposite to um, what is here if that makes sense so this first one because it's opposite a mountain we're going to make that a valley the middle of our book we are going to make a mountain and then we're going to do a valley then we're going to flip it up and we're going to do exactly the same again so the first score line 
is opposite a mountain so we do valley to mountain to valley okay and this is kind of what it will look like and then I'm going to grab a bone folder and I'm just going to make sure that these are all really crisp clean lines because that just helps it to keep its formation kind of thing once you get it into your card so I'm just going to fold it all down and just really crease those lines you can do this when it's in the card as well I did and that worked fine um, but I don't think you can really reinforce fold lines too much really especially when you're making fun folds I think it's really good to go over them a lot but that might just be me what do you think do you think you can over exaggerate a fold line do you just do it once and leave it let me know okay so there's your basic shape okay now I'm gonna bring back the card base so I am gonna have my linen side facing out so this is gonna go um, on the inside and what you kind of want to do is make sure that your middle mountains on the top and bottom match up with your center score line here when you're laying it all down so we're going to glue this in a minute but you only glue part of the card because otherwise it can't pop um, and the easiest way to do is to lay it all flat and match up your center score lines with the center of the card and just get a um, a border around the book that's even or that you're happy with so just like that and then I'm going to hold it with pegs and you don't have to do this but I just find it a little bit easier to hold it in place while I'm doing this next bit so I'm going to put a peg on there and a peg on here and I'm really sorry my camera seems to be swinging about all over the place and I don't know why and I'm going to put a peg this end as well okay so I've got oh I did have a nice even border just make sure it's still even there we go, it's moved a little bit. Put a peg back on there. Right, gluing. So we don't want to glue this middle section because otherwise it can't pop. I am going to be using my tacky glue. Now I've also found a bit of a hack for these. I've said in a recent video how I find that the glue doesn't always come out of the end of this easily and I had to keep going at it and poking something down there to free it up well I got bored of doing that so I did an experiment and I actually cut it I don't know if you can see I cut it further down the um spout I guess or the applicator nozzle and touch wood except there's no wood nearby um I haven't had any issues getting this to now squeeze every time I squeeze it comes out so if you're having trouble with this glue coming out and you don't want to live with a pin in the end try cutting it a little bit further down the the applicator nozzle and on an angle see how I've got a slight slant to mine might might just be me but I've found it works quite well okay back to the card so we only want to glue part of the mechanism and we're going to glue this part here um, and just be careful not to let it um, leak out as well because you don't want it to get onto the rest of the mechanism or it's not going to pop so I'm going to be quite liberal the only thing when you do um, 
cut these further down is you do get more of a gloop if you see what I mean it comes out thicker but I don't actually mind that at least it works and I just want something that's going to work okay so just going to hold that in place for a second mop up any extra glue with my finger that's seeping out but not much should and this is why I hold it with pegs because I didn't want the rest of it moving and lose my border so by holding the rest of it in place with pegs I personally just find it easier to glue stuff in place you don't have to do it like that at all if you can you know hold it in place and do it then that's fine right I hope this is making sense I know what I'm trying to say it's very very late um then we're just going to repeat the same step but down um the other end so i'm going to grab my glue and i'm just going to glue this little funny half e shape i guess you could call it because it looks like an e without the um arm in the middle doesn't it really there we go and then that's pretty much your card done and then you've just got the fun of decorating it so for decorating my card I've decided to use Christmas Village because I love that collection and I really need to crack on with my Christmas cards and I also decided to use the glitter card that I bought from Printable Heaven because I wanted to see how it cut um, and I'll show you in a minute, it actually cut quite well. I was really happy. Let's put the top on my glue and take my pegs off. And we will have a little look at the card. So the first thing to do is just to get it all to close up. Like that. And just push down to make sure it takes its shape. Um, and obviously make sure this fold line you've done earlier is nice and crisp. So again, this is when I start using my bone folder again because I just don't think it hurts to give it a little bit of an extra helping hand. And then that is how it's going to look when um, whoever it is opens it. So now we just have to decorate the card so let me show you what I've got pre-prepped so I have a few things pre-prepped okay so I have four glitter cards like this and these ones measure three and a quarter by one and a quarter and then I have four like designer type paper things so I think people call it DSP but I just call it pre paper these measure three by one and an eighth so I've got four of each of those then I have eight glitter card these measure two and three quarters by one and the paper I'm putting over the top of that measures two and five eighths by seven eighths now if you're using directional paper just be very careful that you get it all going the right way because um, it would be easy to um, cut it slightly wrong and then have um i don't know one thing going one way another going that way so on and so forth so just be careful if you're using um a directional paper but i didn't i just used the spots because i really liked it then these bits are going to go in the book in the middle now there's no saying you have to have a picture or something you could put a really nice verse inside but i've just gone with the pictures because they're so cute i mean how could you not love those two little dudes so uh getting back to it my glitter card measures two and three quarters by three and an eighth 
then I have used a die and the die I used was from this X cut set and I used the third one down and it measures roughly uh, two and three quarter square and then this little picture is just going to sit inside it's kind of roughly two inches but you know each to their own however you want to do it you can so these are going to be going on the inside and so these ones will mat and layer into the center of the book and the large ones will mat and layer into like the large areas and then the smaller ones will go everywhere else i'm hoping that was all just in shot so i'm gonna just stick those down i'll put it on fast forward while i do that and then i'll come back to you So how cute does that look inside? So now I'm just going to re reinforce <laughs> again my fold lines inside. Just obviously be very aware that it might be wet. So if you want to leave a bit of time between doing this bit and sticking, please do. Um, but this tacky glue dries quite quick. So look how adorable adorable that is so now all I need to do is the front of the card so I think what I'm going to do I think I'm actually going to put some silver down first then I'm going to layer on this look how beautiful that is it's really sparkly um, that's from Christmas Village, so I put that on. I have already decoupaged this cute window. This is actually one of the bows I was making the other day in a previous video, and a lot of people assured me I could use a lighter to seal the ends and I wouldn't cause a fire. Well, you'll laugh. I was stood over the sink doing it because I was like... Like, you don't know my luck. If something could go wrong, it normally does. Uh, but I didn't cause a fire. And I will now be sealing the rest of my bows off. Um, but I'm going to use that because I think that's not a bad little colour match, actually. That's come with it. And I might go and find some of this ribbon just to put as a border. So I'm just going to crack on and get that done. And I'll be back. So the layers I'm going to do on the front, I'm going to do five and three quarters for the silver card, five and a half for the matted layer and then everything else over the top.
and that is pretty much it done um i did decide not to use the green bow in the end and the green ribbon i just thought it was quite pretty as it is your message goes on the back here so i think i'll be cutting a another uh silver mirror card to mat it onto five and three quarter square then some white card or some cream card probably five and a half square and that'll go on the back for my message but i think this is a super cute card and who wouldn't want to have that on their mantelpiece i mean you'd be sport of choice would you have it that way or would you have it that way or would you have it so you can see all of it i think it's a really adorable card and i hope you have enjoyed seeing how i made it so i will be back soon with more videos thank you so much for watching today take care and i'll see you soon bye for now